So to discuss this, please welcome back a familiar face, Craig Smith. He's the chief executive of Eye on AI. crowd. Uh, we're going to talk about something that's close to my heart uh, because I spent much of my adult life in China uh, and I'm American uh, and that is a fork in the road between the United States and China uh, which means between two very large parts of the world not just the countries. Uh, over uh, chip hardware, semiconductors. Uh, since uh, 2022, the Biden administration has been slowly tightening the restrictions on uh, the export of semiconductors, high-end semiconductors, and semiconductor manufacturing equipment. And just this month, they increased those restrictions and extended the ones that, that they already had in place. And this is uh, really uh, hurt China's ability to compete in the realm of AI. Uh, personally, I think it's a bad development because I think the further the two countries drift apart, uh, the more dangerous the world is. Uh, semiconductors, as Chris is going to explain, are really uh, the lifeblood of uh, all technology, but in particular, AI. Uh, most of the semiconductors used in AI are manufactured in Taiwan at uh, a company called uh, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation. And that country and that company are in a very delicate place because of the tensions between the US and China. Taiwan, as we all know, is protected by the US military. China would like to recover control of Taiwan and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing in a company is the, is the crown jewel of Taiwan's economy. Uh, so TSMC has been building uh, semiconductor fabs in the United States and elsewhere to try and uh, diversify its, its uh, risk. Uh, and China, in response, and started research into building its own semiconductor uh, manufacturing industry. Uh, but to do that, you need very high-tech, uh, extreme ultraviolet light lithography machines, which are only manufactured in uh, the Netherlands and Tokyo or uh, Japan and the export controls extend to those countries. So China is really in a bind. Chris has written a book about all of this called Chip War, uh, and I'll, I'll let him uh, introduce the full title of the book. I think it's, uh, well, I won't try and remember it, but uh, uh, about just this issue. So uh, with that, introduction. Chris, can you tell us uh, kind of where things stand right now and how you see them playing out in the next five or ten years? Well, I think your introduction laid out perfectly the central role that semiconductors play in all AI development. 
And if you look over the last 10 years and ask what's been the key driver of progress in AI, there's been some progress in algorithms, some progress in data collection, but the primary driver has been better and better and better semiconductors. And if you look at the biggest tech companies in the world today, they're betting on spending tens of billions of dollars buying advanced semiconductors, putting them into huge data centers as the critical factor in their ability to train bigger and more sophisticated AI systems, which means that the companies and the countries that develop these chips have a whole lot of wealth and a lot of influence over how AI will develop. Yeah, in particular, uh, you know, China can still manufacture a certain level of chip, but uh, we're now down to uh, seven nanometer, sub seven nanometer, uh, and they don't have the capacity to manufacture those. Uh, TSMC is restricted from exporting those chips to China. How is China, uh, are, are you confident, one, that China is going to be able to develop uh, the, uh, the lithography equipment required to produce those chips? Or do you think that it's, it's just going to fall steadily behind? Or do you think that the U.S. will eventually, uh, once it feels that it's got enough of a lead, that it'll relax the controls on China? Well, I think so long as there's an intense geopolitical competition between China and the United States, tech controls are going to be a central part of that competition. And right now, every chip-making facility in China has the most sophisticated tools inside of it from other countries, from the Netherlands, from Japan, and from the United States. And that's why the US has been able to put these restrictions on China's chip making capabilities, because China doesn't produce these tools internally. And when it comes to the most advanced lithography tools, it's now been six years since China's been prohibited from buying them from the Netherlands. And right now, it's hard to see any evidence that China's made progress in uh, domestically producing these tools. And if you don't have the tools, it's very, very difficult to produce cutting edge chips efficiently, which is why now two years after the US prohibited the sale of advanced processors to China, China is still importing large volumes of less advanced versions right. because they can't produce the cutting edge ones domestically. Yeah, but China, as with Saudi Arabia, wants to be a leader in AI. It has this plan to be uh, the global leader in, by 2035. Uh, this ab effectively kills that ambition. Uh, is that right? I mean, uh, and uh, I mean, the, the other side of it is that it's hurting uh, U.S. manufacturers that sell to China. Nvidia has has lost a lot of uh, market in China, but. Uh, but is there any way around this? Is China just stuck and it's going to steadily fall behind? Well, I think China is certainly pouring tens of billions of dollars a year trying to catalyze its own chip industry, trying to find new methods of advancement that don't rely on the existing tools that China can't get access to. The, the challenge China faces is that they're going to try to make advances, but Taiwan's also trying to make advances. And Taiwan is improving their chip manufacturing at an exponential rate, as Moore's law dictates. And so you're running in the fastest race humans have ever run in. And China is starting from a position of being about five years behind in its chip manufacturing, and about 15 years behind in its manufacturing of the chip making tools. The, the problem China faces is that although it's making progress technologically, Taiwan's been making progress at the exact same rate. So China is five years behind Taiwan today. And they were five years behind Taiwan 10 years ago. Yeah, it, the TSMC is building a, a chip fab in Arizona. Uh, do you know uh, what uh, scale or what, uh, how, how advanced that technology is going to be? Is that going to be the most advanced? That'll be fairly advanced, but a generation or two behind the capabilities in Taiwan. So today, TSMC produces 99% of the GPU chips that are used in AI training and inference. And I think it's most likely the case that in five years' time, most GPUs will still be produced by one company in Taiwan. Yeah. 
Yeah. Will the, the U.S. fabs be able to catch up with Taiwan? I mean, if it's two or three years behind, or are they being built at that level and, and they'll remain at that level? Well, TSMC has uh, indicated that its R&D will stay in Taiwan, which means that its most advanced chips will be made in Taiwan for the foreseeable future, yeah. which creates this extraordinary concentration. They're the world's biggest tech companies, all of the world's AI infrastructure depends on just a couple of factories in Taiwan. Yeah. China's precluded from having the uh, extreme ultraviolet lithography required to do these uh, very uh, high-end chips. Other countries are not. Are there other chip manufacturers that are coming on stream to challenge uh, TSMC's dominance? The other two co companies that would like to challenge TSMC are Samsung of South Korea and Intel of the United States. But right now, those challenges are aspirational. And TSMC is both the technology leader, and more importantly, it's the market share leader. Uh, right. And so the rest of the industry is competing for the 1% of the cutting edge that TSMC yeah. currently doesn't have. Do you have a sense of how far ahead uh, or how long it would take for or Intel, one of the other chip manufacturers, to build a fab that could compete or take market share from TSMC? Well, it's, it's partly a question of building the fab, but it's also a question of developing the know-how yeah. to work with your customers. And so companies like Apple and NVIDIA, they bet their entire future on the ability of TSMC to produce the chips that they need. And so it's not just a question of who's got a comparable factory. It's a question of who's got a comparable ability to take this advanced R&D manufacturing it at the nanometer scale, that's billionths of a meter, and do so with almost perfect efficacy. And so even if you've got a factory that looks just like TSMC's, your customer's gonna trust you can operate it with the same degree of efficiency? Probably not. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Chinese, uh, I have great confidence in the Chinese to be able to do extraordinary things. Uh, and as we were talking, they're, they're working on uh, using a, a, a football field-sized particle accelerator to generate the light needed for uh, ultraviolet etching. Uh, how do you have a sense of how long it would take for them? And I understand it's not just the hardware, uh, but how long it would take for them to get to the point where they could do nanometer uh, size? Well, I think we, we know that it's been six years that China hasn't been able to buy these advanced lithography tools with very little evidence of progress thus far. I think we should assume it's gonna be at least another half a decade, maybe longer, before yeah. China begins to replicate these capabilities. But then the key question is still not, what can China do in five years? It's where will Taiwan be? with the help of technology partners in the Netherlands, in the US, in Japan, where will Taiwan be at that point? Because if China's moved forward by 20%, but Taiwan's moved forward by 20%, the gap's the same. Yeah, yeah, well, it's fascinating. Uh, although 10 years from, from my vantage point is not very long. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, so the US has essentially secured dominance in AI. And, and anyone that wants to play in the AI field uh, is going to have to play with the U.S. Is that right? Well, that, that is the case today, that if you want to build a high-end data center for training AI systems, it's very, very difficult to do so without U.S.-made chips. There are some systems in China that can do it, but China's a net importer of U.S.-made chips, yeah. so China's not going to be exporting AI technology anytime soon. Hard to predict the future. In three years' time or five years' time, we can't say. But today, if you want a cutting-edge AI data center, you've basically got to turn to U.S. technology. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is new technology coming on stream. Uh, certainly, there's great promise. The next speaker is going to talk about quantum. Uh, at some point, uh, this will be an old story. Uh, you, you, you won't be chasing Moore's law. Uh, but, but at the level that uh, China can manufacture, uh, are they able to build, uh, I mean, the, 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 
the nanometer scale chips are important for the speed and uh, the, the, the amount of compute that they can process. Uh, but it doesn't mean that a less uh, advanced chip can't do it. It just can't do it as fast. Is that right? That, that's, that's right. When it comes to training AI systems, you've got not just one chip, but thousands and thousands of chips networked together. And so the inefficiencies of using larger numbers of older and less capable chips grow in a nonlinear fashion. And so the reason why, whether it's Elon Musk or Sam Altman, they're all trying to buy the most advanced chips that NVIDIA can produce and buy them at a scale of 100,000 or 300,000 is because there are huge efficiencies that emerge from getting the most advanced technology. Yeah. No one is saying older generation chips are cheaper, let's buy more of those because the inefficiency involved uh, outweighs whatever price benefit you get from buying the chip. So having access to the cutting edge really has been critical to building bigger and better AI systems. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, 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 there is a, a black market in, in GPUs flowing into China. Uh, is it possible from your understanding that, that China could still build uh, advanced foundation models and keep up with uh, the foundation models coming out of Europe and the United States without these advanced chips, or is it a non-starter? it gets very inefficient and very costly very fast if you're using uh, old hardware. The reason we didn't train GPT-4 10 years ago is because it would have been economically unviable to acquire all of the chips that would have been necessary and build a data center that would have been many, uh, many times the size of what already are very large data centers. So the, the reason I think we don't see China producing foundation models of the size that are being produced by big tech firms in the United States is uh, that they lack access to some of this advanced technology yeah. that they need. And, and smuggling works on the margin for small use cases, but you're not going to smuggle a 100,000 GPU cluster. That's just too many yeah. to uh, be viable. Uh, and that's, that's the challenge that Chinese AI firms face. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, this really raises the stakes in the Taiwan Straits uh, debate, uh, debate crisis, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Xi Jinping uh, has made it very clear that recovering Taiwan is one of his lifetime goals. And with TSMC in Taiwan playing such a critical role in the future of the global economy, uh, it seems the stakes are higher that, uh, that China may be willing to risk more. In your research, did people talk about that risk? Well, I think the, the chip industry is aware of that risk, but prefers not to think about it because the implications <laughs> would be so dire. And I think today, as AI gets more and more important, the implications are only growing because yeah. it's no longer just the chip industry that would be impacted. It's all progress in AI. If 99% of GPUs are made in Taiwan, losing right. access to those factories would slow AI progress yeah. uh, immediately. And that is a, a real challenge to the industry. I think it's also, though, uh, a factor that shapes China's calculus. Right now, China is still hoping it's going to be a net beneficiary of AI. But if it realizes that it's losing the race, then it might be willing to take more risks around Taiwan. Yeah. I, I know that you started out in Russian studies uh, and in particularly studying uh, chip hardware in Russia. Where does Russia figure in this? Have they dropped out of the race? Uh, are they subject to the same export controls? Uh, Russia is subject to the same export controls, but it's irrelevant because they're a tiny, tiny player. And, and the reason is simple. They had great technologists. They have brilliant scientists. They put a lot of government money into their chip industry, but they couldn't scale. They didn't have access to global markets. And this is really key. If you look at what's allowed leading chip companies to succeed, it's selling around the world. And I think this is going to be important going forward as well, because if you're going to invest billions of dollars every year, you need to sell globally. Uh, to amortize that investment. And that's something that all of the world's chip firms realize, and having access to world markets is therefore critical to their business success today and to their ability to invest in R&D into the future. Yeah, that's interesting because people, uh, I've talked to a lot of people about the idea of the world dividing into AI zones, 
based on uh, data and based on the, the, geo the political, local and regional political uh, values. And so you would have uh, a more authoritarian AI or a more uh, restrictive AI in China and countries uh, close to China, you would have a less restrictive AI in, uh, in Europe and the United States. But that question's moot if China can't build uh, the kinds of models to keep up with the West. Uh, is this affecting how uh, China's allies uh, are regarding China as a technology partner? I think it is beginning to impact how people see Chinese technology. I think so long as China's importing lower end chips from NVIDIA, chips that are specifically downgraded to meet US export controls, the world realizes China's not gonna be exporting AI hardware anytime soon. And that's why even Chinese tech firms are buying as much access to um, US chips as they can. And they can do so legally in places like Malaysia or Southeast Asia. And this is, a, I think, a meaningful signal to the rest of the world that if, if China's most advanced tech firms want to buy uh, as much US technology as they can, that tells you something about where they think uh, China's own chip technology is headed. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, a lot of this stuff exists in the cloud, and this is not necessarily on-prem. Uh, are Chinese cloud providers, I, I met uh, Huawei's cloud provider here, uh, under the same restrictions, even if they're incorporated and based outside of China? It depends which company you're looking at. T today, it's the case that most Chinese firms operating outside of China can get access to high-end GPUs, but that's something that could change in the future, and I think you should expect as long as the U.S. has a meaningful lead in chip technology, it's going to try to use that to its advantage. Yeah, uh, because the the application layer. Am I over time? <laughs> um, just one question: the application layer uh, can can access the foundation models through API, and with 5G, the latency is is uh, decreasing. Is that an option for China? They don't own the foundation models, but they can access and build applications on top of them. For now, that's, that's an option for certain of the foundation models, but other ones restrict access uh, to their API in China. So it depends which one you're looking at, and it's clear that those could be restricted either by China or by the U.S. at any point in the future. Yeah. Okay. I think we're out of time. So thank you all. Got a couple of guys sleeping in the fourth row. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>